Hey everybody, I'm here at Game Theory in Wake Forest with Sam, who just took first place in our locals. He's going to give us a deck profile today. Cowboy for game, let's go! <laughs> okay, so, start, we'll start off with the tier names. Two Rano Heart, three Murley, three Havness, three Shaywin, pretty bog standard. And then, for the Ashizu stuff, I do run the one Orange White, one Agito, three Millers, and then, of course, the six Shufflers. Again, this is pretty standard. I do like the one Orange White. I typically side it out because, you know, going second, you don't really want to see Agito, and maybe you side out, like, a Kelbeck or, or a Mudora, depending on the matchup. So it's a really nice, flexible spot for your side deck, and if you happen to draw it with another Earth Fairy, it's just such a blowout that I felt like it was worth running still. And then... For the Bestials, I do run nine Bestials. I think that these cards are just so, so crazy. The body on board, plus the disruption, plus you can use them to make Wallow plays or Link plays. It's just so, so, so good that I think that you're crazy if you're not running nine Bestials at this point. And especially if you're playing against the Mirror Match, which is really the only thing that you need to fear with this deck, Nine Vist deals comes up so much. Like um, on Sunday, I went 4-0 with this deck on at another locals on Sunday, and I played three Ishizu tier mirrors. Vist deals were so important, so 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 important all day. And if I wasn't playing all nine, probably would have lost at least one two, one or two more of those games. But I didn't, so that's why I play nine. Of course, four field spell, instant fusion. I play one of each of these. I would like to play another Soyuk because it feels really, really good to mill, and it's also like fine to draw. But I'm already at 42 cards, so I just didn't feel like that there was enough space. It didn't come up often enough where I would need the extra plus, so I felt like one was fine. And then here's the spice. Two King of the Swamp, one Polymerization. So this enables you to get access to things like uh, Guardian Chimera and Fusion Graffa, and in a pinch you can also use this to make like an early Lulu if you think that they have a Bestial in hand. So it's really impactful and a really important card in this deck, and it saved my ass so many times. Like, Guardian Chimera play just shreds Rogue. Absolutely goes over it like nobody's business. That and the poly... Oh, something that other people actually forget is... Here's an example of a line that I did on, um, I did on Sunday to win a game. So I went dark, take my opponent's Kit Kalos. I have a poly left in my hand. I go Kit Kalos, add... Havness or whatever name for my deck to my hand. Go poly with the dark and the Havness, and then I go full combo just based on that. Now you could go, you know, some people say that you could go sprint there, but having the extra Kikalos on the field there was, enabled me to attack for game that turn, and I won that match because of that. All right, so fusions. We've got one Kit, one Lulu, one Kaleido. Nobody's playing Kashtira right now, except that guy, apparently. <laughs> the guy across from me. It doesn't come up too often, and you can play without Kit. It hurts, it's harder, it depends a lot more on what you mill, but you can play without it, so one is just fine. And then of course, Chimera, Fusion Graffa. This card's crazy. So something that is really nice that you can do with this deck that you can't do in the regular variant is, say you end on Fusion Graffa plus Crime, so your opponent goes, I don't know, Bistial or whatever. You chain Fusion Graffa, you discard the name in your hand, you make a Kikalos. Kikalos will search you a different name, and then you go and you grab another, or yeah, you search a different name. Yeah, got a little tongue tied there. And then your crime is live again. So it's basically like two Omni Negates that you don't need to have two cards in hand for. And I think a lot of people forget about that. And then what, need, what more needs to be said about Guardian Chimera? If you, go, if you put a Guardian Chimera on the field, you're going like plus five. Uh, then of course, Mud Dragon, Garura, Draco Stapelia. I don't think too much more can be said about those guys that hasn't already been said. Dweller, Boguska, Redoer. Um, Redoer is like a sprint for level fours. A lot of people have been cutting this. Um, I think that they're wrong to cut that. Because um, it gets you out of just really weird situations where they like this steal your monster and you don't have a follow up. You can go, um, you can go Redoer with two of your level fours, including a Shaylin, and then get going from there. So it's a really nice option to have. Wallow, this card's crazy with all the Vist deals. I basically played Wallow Control one game today, <laughs> where I just summoned a bunch of Bistials against the final match over here, my man Rohan on, uh, on Bistial Sprite. And something really funny was I had a Sprint plus a Wallow. My opponent had 10 cards in Graveyard, and like 
5,900 life points or something, or 68. So I go attack with Sprint and attack with Wallow, both, both boosted. Then I go Wallow, steal his Sprite Blue, and attack for the last bit of damage. And it was a cheese win, but I didn't have to go for another round, which he probably would have killed me on the crackback, so it was really impactful there. Then, of course, one Zeus. Zeus is just nice. You go Dweller Zeus, Baguska Zeus. Just good to have. And then Sprint and Dark. I'm not playing Elf. It just hasn't come up for me. I cut Elf. I've missed it maybe one time. And even then, it was just like, oh, it would be nice if I could like do something to make my monsters untargetable. Really didn't matter that much. I still ended up winning that game. Sprint and Dark are really all you need, in my opinion. So that's where I made space for the uh, Guardian Chimera and the... Um, and the uh, Fusion Grapha. But yeah, those are, in my opinion, the best options in this deck. Maybe Fusion Grapha's a little cope, maybe I'll change my mind about that later, but on a local level, it's really, really good. Uh, one Zombie World, didn't draw it, didn't use it all day. Um, I just didn't have a 15th card, so that's what I picked. Uh, Ghost Spell, everybody's playing Bestials, so you need Ghost Spell going second, or going first even. It's really strong, even against, um, I played a Tri-Brigade match today, and I belled one of his, um, I forget what the monster was, but I belled one of his monsters and he didn't have follow-up, so made matches a lot easier. Triple attack is just crazy. Jesus, this card is ridiculous. And then Gamma, three Gamma and a Driver. So you play three Gamma and a Driver for Shifter. That is literally it. You leave this in going first, you play it going second, Going second, it's good against like the rogue decks. You side out some bestials that uh, may not be good into say like Runic Nature or something like that. And Gamma will do a lot more for you in those matchups. And if you get to resolve Gamma on your own turn, hey, free sprint. Yep. And then two Lightning Storm, one Duster. Um, blowout cards, board wipes. Good against Flunder, good against a lot of rogue decks. Just really nice in general. And then the Spice. I don't have Scattershot, I don't have Skullmark Ladybug, so we play one Cowboy. <laughs> and it won in the and match. It, it did win me yep. a game. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about my siding patterns here, because I think that a lot of people have trouble with siding in this deck. And there's not a lot of people who really talk about it, so I'll talk about that real quick. So I side in, I typically side in up to, uh, up to 13 cards going first or second. Um, I may not side in like the Lightning Storms and the Dusters going first, but I side in between 11 and 14 cards in a lot of different matchups. So here are the cards that I side out, just quick. So I side this out going second. It's not good going second. You don't really want to see it against, well, yeah, you just don't really want to see it going second. Of course, depending on the matchup, I'll side out a number of Bistials. I also side out some Bistials going first because um, you just don't want to see them in your opening hand. They clog your hand, so I might side out like uh, two Drus Worms, uh, two Sarniers, and putting like a Gamma package, depending. And maybe like Magnumut, if I, think, if I think that something else is going to be more impactful in the matchup. Other oh, steal. Um, I will side out a Shuffler, depending on the matchup again. If I'm playing like against uh, another ish tier player, I'm not going to side out any Shufflers because you need all of them. Yep. And then the Millers, you can side out one Kelbeck, and then you're pretty much always siding out a Gito going second because it's basically always a brick. Going first, it's really nice because if you go Keldo, pitch Kelbeck, you can add the Agito and then force your opponent to mill five, then special summon the Agito and special summon the Kelbeck back, and you have an instant rank four, so you can do something like make a Dweller, which can be really impactful. It's just free advantage. Um, sometimes I'll side out the Orange White. If I'm siding out a number of these Ashizu cards... Got to finish this quick. Yep. So if I'm siding out some number of the Ashizu cards, I will typically side this out, because you need all the Ashizu cards in your deck to make this live. If you side any of them out, just side it out. And then something that a lot of people might find strange is I might side out a Murley, depending on the match. So this theory is very much inspired by Hani's list. This whole deck is inspired by Hani's uh, locals uh, deck. I made a bunch of tweaks to it, but shout out to him because his, his deck lists, he's really got the sauce when it comes to this deck. But you can get away with running two Murley because it's not really so great to open Murley like in your opening hand. It's fine. But if you open two into something like the Mirror, well, you're going to have a really bad time. So signing out one Murley gives you an extra flex spot to put in a hand trap or like a, t or like a talents that just might be more impactful in the matchup. And yeah, this is my favorite deck of all time. Non-linear combos, really, really just great, great fun. I know it's going to get hit at some point, but I'm going to have fun with it while it's here now. And I hope that this...
might have helped you be a better player with uh, Ishtar. And oh. shout out to Steven, of course. Yeah, any other shout outs before we pack up and go? My man Rohan and Randy over here, and Jose, and Mark. We got all four of them here, we got the crew. It's a good time. And of course, shout out my parents who have always been extremely supportive of me.